Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm starting a series of videos to explain you how to build a mic SW model. Uh, mic 21 is part of the mic zero suit and in particular the SW module is it called the spectral waves allows you to simulate the propagation of waves from a point offshore to a point inshore taking into account multiple wave transformation processes. I'll explain uh, what are those wave transformation processes later in the videos and in this series I'm going to take into account that you have knowledge in maritime engineering and I'm going to go into detail on the basics as the main aim, main objective of this series of videos is to build a numerical model. So if you have any query in particular please leave it in the commentary sections and I'll try to um, answer them if I can, if I have time. Nevertheless, I, what I will do is describe a single step to build a model from scratch, giving you hints of the multiple options and possibilities that the software has. And so let's get cracking with this. First of all, what we need uh, to build our model is an admiralty chart. The admiralty chart is going to be useful to uh, obtain the bathymetry of the offshore areas. The numerical model needs to uh, to work to propagate waves from an offshore area, let's say this area here that I'm pointing with a mouse, to an inshore area. Let's 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 think or let's imagine that what I want to do is to know what is the what are, what are going to be the wave conditions uh, on this island uh, when something's happening here offshore. So to use the admiralty charts to obtain the bathymetry offshore, what you're going to do is save you some money on the bathymetric survey that has to be performed on the area inshore. I don't have to say that you already have data of the offshore area available. You will be able to skip this step, but that's certainly unlikely because, well, people don't tend just to uh, do bathymetric surveys from random places over the world. So therefore, first of all, we have to um, georeference the admiralty chart. Georeferencing the admiralty chart means that we're gonna um, give real coordinates to this image. Currently this image is just that, it's an image, it's a BMP and it doesn't have anything else. So what we're gonna do is to assign coordinates to this admiralty chart, to this image. And also while doing that we're gonna adjust it to one projection system. In this case I'm gonna work with WGS A4 as my projection system, but if you're working in the UK, maybe it would be better for you to work with um, UKGS36 or, well, whatever system you want to use. Just be sure that uh, when you ask for your bathymetric survey, survey uh, of the insured area, you be sure to ask the survey team to work with the same uh, reference system or the projection system that you have used or that you're going to use afterwards because if not it will be a, a mess of the, the data that they're going to give you ensure it won't match with the data that you have obtained from the admiralty charts so um, to georeference an image first we shall open this model of the Mike Zero Suit. This model is called uh, Image Rectifier. And sorry for this, but I forgotten to say at the beginning it was that I'm gonna work with the demo version of the software. As I don't currently own a valid mic license. The only limitation of this is going to be that I'll be limited at some point in this course I'll be limited 
on the numbers of elements of the mesh that I'm going to produce in later videos. So the model that we're going to produce with this course is going to is not going to be the detailed one, but uh, do not close the video yet. I highly recommend you to build a simplified model before you produce the detailed one because this simplified model, what is going to allow you is to check that the results are more or less the results that you expect to obtain. So, and that, and having and working with a simplified model, what is going to yes, it's going to save you lots of time because with a really really detailed mesh, what happens is that the calculation time software needs to give you a result, it's huge. I mean, we're talking about hours. So with a simplified model, you will be able to get a uh, an answer within I don't know if if you have a, um, an average computer, let's say let, it's, we're, we're talking about I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, so um, that's better than having to wait a couple hours to uh, see that, oh, I messed this up and the finance, I don't know, maybe the wave conditions, and they don't really represent what you were wanting to. So first, uh, I highly recommend you to build a simplified model. And uh, after you have the simplified model, the only difference between uh, the simplified one and the more detailed one is going to be to generate a new mesh more detailed, and that takes, I don't know, 15 minutes. So it's really worth it. So let's begin. You're referencing this uh, admiralty. Uh, Admiralty chart. As I said, uh, we're going to wor work with this model. So first, we have to uh, find the Admiralty chart that we're going to be working with. Um, you have to have the Admiralty chart in BMP format. Uh, Mike doesn't recognize any other format than. BMP and also I recommend you to have a, um, a good quality admiralty chart because you're gonna need it so um, I'm gonna open this this is the same image that I have opened here uh, but here so first of all what Mike asked us is the origin of coordinates in X and Y so Mike is asking us this corner here. The problem with this is that the admiralty chart used to be in degrees. So what we have to do is to transform these coordinates into x and y coordinates. How? There are multiple ways. I'm going to show you one. And it works. It's fast. and I recommend you this one. So I'm going to work with this software, UTM Converter. It's a free software. I'll add the link to the um, uh, to the commentary section on the YouTube uh, video. So what we do here is just to put the uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, this is minus eight because it's on the uh, left side of the Greenwich uh, meridian. So um, it's pretty simple. We put this here, convert geo to UTM, and here it gives me the X and Y. And also it gives me something really interesting. That is the WGS uh, zone. In this case, is the zone 29. And well, I'm working with a admiralty chart of the North Hemisphere. If you were working, in, or if you work with a admiralty chart of the South hemisphere so you have to check like change this because if not it will give you the wrong coordinates so this is what Mike is asking me so what I'm gonna do is to um, take those coordinates and paste them here and here really really simple 
and easy. Good. Now, what uh, the software is asking us is the dimensions of the area that we are going to work in. This is in meters. Again, what's going to happen is that you're not going to know. Probably this distance is what asking the software is asking you for to give dimensions of this area. So what I usually do is just to pick up this other corner. I put the coordinates of this corner, and they are fifty six degrees, three, uh, 35 minutes, 24 seconds. Again, now what happens? How do you write here those coordinates? Well, <laughs> I'm going to give you another hint. Uh, this little calculator is really useful. So uh, it's just a matter of 66 degrees. 35. You can do the calculations by hand, but it's really it's easier doing it this way. 35 degrees, 24 seconds, and um, that's it. 56 is 59, so that's what I'm going to put here. And the uh, longitude is 6 degrees, 20 minutes, 6 seconds. Really easy. Again, minus 6 point and lots of trees. Just click and I'll obtain uh, those coordinates. But remember that uh, Mike was asking me for the dimensions. So what I just do is to create an Excel spreadsheet and what I do is to obtain the difference in X and Y between those two coordinates. So this is the 56, 35, 24 or oh, it was 56, 36 36, 24 that's why you need a, a high quality image to avoid uh, errors that would be a really silly error to, um, to make here and well <laughs> I recommend you to avoid this kind of no, that would be a stupid thing that happened anyway so when you ha once you have uh, those coordinates, what I have done because I, well, I have worked in this table before those coordinates are these ones, as you can see 66, 366 uh, well, as I made a mistake here that will be the true coordinate um, 56 36 24 so if I do this, it will be, this is the real one, 56, 60, and lots of 6. So this is this number, 6, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, 7, 6, and this is the y coordinate. So uh, this is just a matter of obtaining the difference between those two. So this is giving me the um, yep. the width and the height. Uh, this is saying that the uh, width of the area is a hundred and one thousand meters. I highly recommend you to give it some margin. So if it's giving you a hundred and one thousand, mm, it will be good if you say. 120,000. Why? Because while you're referencing the, um, the Admiralty chart, what it does is to try to adjust the Admiralty chart to the surface of the Earth. So it deformates the image. And those dimensions are going to be the dimensions of the deformated image. And well, I'll explain what, what can happen if you define this too small, these dimensions here, you're going to have trouble 
uh, in the middle of the process and <laughs> sadly you're gonna need to start from scratch again so let's avoid that problem it doesn't matter if you define the area bigger than it has to be so it's better to give it a margin here the same he's saying 70,000 so I'm gonna say uh, 80,000 80, Cool. So now Mike knows more or less where is this point because he has the coordinates and more or less where, is the, where are the dimensions of this image. Now what we need is to, well, Mike only has one point. The minimum number of points to your reference an image is three. This is called rectification of first order. And it needs, as I said, three points. Again, you can work just by rectifying the image with three points, but I highly recommend to work at least with the rectification of second order. That level of accuracy is really needed because if not, your image is going to be defined by this well just three points so uh, let's say this this and this and what's happening with the rest try to imagine that you um, want to uh, cover a sphere with this piece of paper by only having a contact point well by only having three contact points so if it is this and this, this point won't touch the sphere and this point won't touch the sphere. So those other points or those other areas are going to be bad represented. So at least define six points. How? We need to go to this, to click in this icon here, it says add new GCP, it's a georeference point. So let's click here and now it appears this green hand and we're gonna click in one point. Well again if we if you zoom in the area you will get some accuracy. That point. And now it's gonna ask us what are the coordinates of that point. We already know them, so we know that those coordinates are this one. So here, this, this one, and the y coordinate is this one. Done. We have one point. As we already have, because we have used it to obtain the dimensions of the image, we already have that other corner. So we're going to use it. And it was that other point here. So again, copy this and paste it here. Point and paste it here. Cool. Now we need a third point. Now is the point that well that you like. If there is any with the right bottom of the mouse you go zoom out. Okay. Uh, whichever you want. Uh, what I have done. As I have at the uh, middle deter this point here, I'm going to use it because it's easy. So that point is the 56 degrees 20, 20 minutes and 7 degrees 30 minutes. So this is the one that I have here. I think, yes. So I'll do the same to obtain the coordinates. I'm going to do it for you so it will be. 26 degrees, 20 minutes, 0 seconds, and those are the coordinates. I'll go to my software, the UTM coordinator, and the uh, longitude is um, 7 degrees, 30 minutes, and 0 seconds. So this is minus 7.5. Okay, and those are the coordinates that I'm going to use. 
So I'll go to the image rectifier. I know that this is the point. Again, leave your accuracy, won't hurt anyone. That point. And uh, let's see if those were the coordinates that I have. Save some time. Mm, no. Okay, so look, I'll just this one. And I have three points now, so what I will be able to do is to um, do a rectification of first order. I don't recommend you to do that, so I'm going to use a couple more points. For instance, this one. I have already calculated that one, it's this one, so um, I'm going to use it. You should do um, the same, obtain the coordinates as I have shown you. But to save some time, I'm going to use what I already have. And that one. Good. What was this one? Yes. Four points. We need a couple more. And for example, 56 and minus 6.2. 56. Is this point 56 and minus 6.2? So I go back here. And I'm going to define this point. And that point was this one. And another one. It was the 56, 36, 24, minus 7. That point should be. Uh, this one. So I'll go here and yes, this one. Fifty six, thirty six, x coordinate and y coordinate. Done. Now we're ready to uh, perform this rectification of second order. So if I click here, see, uh, nothing has happened. Why not? Because you have to go to target view. This is the rectify, rectified image. Why has this shape, this weird shape? because is what I have said this has adjusted the um, image to the projection system so it's just trying to fit a plane into a sphere and that's why it's to form it this way but as you can see here on the lower left corner of the screen now the image has coordinates so we will be able to check if this coordinate here is the coordinate that we were working with so we're say we were saying that this was the 622817 it was this one 622 C this should be 817 and the y coordinate should be 6 well as this is the I shouldn't do it this way so now sixty two seven five three seven six four well 
it works because it's, well, it's a little bit complicated and uh, let's say six to six to seven five three seven four six two seven five three nine okay it's fine that's from a point that we know that is right let's check if uh, for instance this point here has the coordinates that I should have so this is the uh, point 56 36 24 and the other coordinate is minus 730 7.5 and we go here that point should be the this one 592076 uh, is 592 or 5, 079 well 092 cool Very great and six to seven forty five and six to seven forty six okay so that's the way I have done it with uh, for the sake of not that clarity but to do it more or less in a in a, an amount of time in a short amount of, of time just to uh, six points again I recommend you to go to the rectification of third order so at least do the rectification of second order and I recommend you if you're gonna work in a well in a professional project and something that worth it because it doesn't take any more time well like a little bit more but not really rectification of third order for the rectification of third order you need 12 points uh, so it will be a matter of defining that point that one the intersections the points that are easy to spot on the admiralty chart and that will be that will be the finish of the first uh, step to build the mic 21 sw model of course don't forget to save the image that you have produced um, because it's what you really want um, so after saving, what is going to appear is um, a rectified version uh, automatically generates it. So that's it. Um, I'll continue. We will open on the next video the the mic zero package because this is part of the mic zero but it's not um, it is a is a separate model of the package so in the next video you will see what uh, mic 21 looks like I hope that you enjoy it and that you have learned something from it so bye